to Modern Homestead Alaska. I'm Jessica and it is pressure canner week. Thank you to those of you that have come back time and time again. You are greatly appreciated. If you're new around here, I'm taking just the month of the Every Bit Counts Challenge to introduce myself on each video. I am Jessica. This is our modern homestead in South Central Alaska, and we share on this channel all of the joys that Alaska has to offer, whether it's the building projects from the ground up, we've built this modern homestead, preserving, canning, pantry, all the different things, as well as the hunting and fishing adventures that we go on, animal husbandry as far as chickens and rabbits and dairy cattle, and of course, we have a few dogs to speak of. We feed a family of nine from our pantry. Nine grown adults is what you'll find us stocking and storing for this month. It is a overcast, gloomy, rainy day out there, and I have waited and tried to put this off, but I have to run out and grab some celery in order for us to make the tomato sauce. So. Hold that, I'll be right back. I genuinely try and stay out of the garden when it's raining because it's really destructive to the soil. So I have a handful of shallots I noticed while I was out there. Set those aside. And then I have a huge bunch of fresh, large leaf, mega, huge parsley and the rest is celery. I'm going to get this rinsed out. We're going to start filling a pot in order to skin the tomatoes. I think because they aren't organic, I don't want to cook them down with the skins on. Plus we will be removing the skins and seeds and so on through the process anyway. So it's really, really simple to skin the tomatoes. And so we're gonna do that with a little bit of hot water. For, we're doing spaghetti with meat sauce. That is what our family likes. It's what we're used to. And I think to switch our family over to a home can thing, it's best to do it as, as close to kind of what your family is used to. So in the ball, complete book of home preservation. We have um, in the meat and poultry section. So you have the stocks and so on. A little tickle in my nose. Chili, beef stew, spaghetti with meat sauce. I also looked up a spaghetti with meat sauce on the National Center for Food Preservation and it's almost identical. In fact, I think it is the same recipe. I need 30 pounds of Roma tomatoes. To peel these, I'm gonna do just what I did with the peaches and the nectarines. I'm gonna put a X in the bottom and each one of these boxes is 25 pounds. However, my husband comes in and eats them. <laughs> he just cuts them, puts a little jalapeno salt on it and it's his favorite snack as well as we've made tacos one night and used some of them. So I wanna be pretty accurate with my first time making this recipe. And so I have it on a kitchen scale here and we'll do about half at a time and then put the other half into boil or however much this will hold. So 30 pounds. So we have two 25 pound boxes. We'll try this recipe and then um, maybe just some plain crushed tomatoes or tomatoes and basil and garlic, like something a little more simple. But we will try and make tomato sauce that is just a regular basic spaghetti sauce. Um, I needed the celery. We'll get to the recipe in a minute but one of the options was either um, bell peppers, which I don't 
love what a bell pepper does when it's canned up. Um, it kind of has, I don't know, it, it's a little bitter, if you will. And so you have to be really careful when you can with peppers. So I'm just gonna skip that. Plus that's not something I would put in my spaghetti sauce normally. Um, so we're going with celery. Now, I wouldn't normally put celery in a homemade spaghetti sauce either. So in all fairness, I think celery will be a little more mild though. So that's seven pounds so far. Okay, so that makes 15 pounds. All right, we have 30 pounds of tomatoes. And then I think I'll just weigh out what is left, but this is what I was looking for. Bad spots like that. This one has a little mold. I'm gonna cut them and see if they're salvageable. If not, no big deal. Out of 50 pounds of ripe tomatoes, um, it, that's actually not so bad. So we'll see what we have left. I ended up with another almost 14 pounds. So about 30, 40, 44 pounds or so. Three tomatoes were a total loss and just a couple of chunks. So that actually is so good. And like I said, Aaron comes in and just eats them like crazy. We're gonna see how many of these we can get. The water is not boiling. It's just starting to bubble a little. So all we're looking to do is peel the tomatoes. So get a bunch in here so I can fish them out into the bowl. So let me put the camera down. Hot water. <laughs> One hand. I might be able to get most of this bowl in there. A little too full, but that's okay. So we're looking for the splits there to start separating the skin from the flesh. All right, so this, this is what we're looking for. The skin literally is bursting and peeling right off. So these are ready because we're gonna be cooking these tomatoes down. We don't need to pre-cook them. Plus all we're trying to do is get that skin off and then I'm not gonna reuse this water after I do this. I'll just dump this. I got all three batches of the tomatoes put through and they're ready to go. So I have a bowl for the skins. I wanted to show you really quick. So I just take a paring knife and look, the skin just peels right off. Da, 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 da. And then I wash the pan that I did boil it in. And with a little bit of steam and by starting with the first bowl, so I'm gonna take the stem off I'm going to just put a little dice on the tomatoes and then they'll go straight into the pan. So now I need to get 30 pounds of tomatoes. My handy scraper, peeled, diced, and thrown in the pan. So I think I'm just gonna have a seat. Look at how easy that is. As soon as you say that, it sticks, right? Of course. a boil and simmer it for about 10 minutes 
this was my grandpa's heavy bottom stainless steel pot. It is so, so nice. It's the biggest pot I have and it barely holds all 30 quarts right now, but it is going to reduce and cook down. So getting the heat going, I'll clean up and start on one more batch of tomatoes. So the tomatoes have been going for a few minutes now and they're already starting to reduce down. There is lots of recommendations. I've read several other recipes and ways of doing it and you can use something to like strain them out. Like I have a tomato processor. Um, you can also use like your food processor. You can use um, a food mill where you run it through there to get rid of seeds and skins and all of those things. Um, I've decided to kind of do like the whole tomato approach since we already peeled it and not worry too much about it. So I'm just using the immersion blender. Getting the cast iron pan preheated. I have these single, I have three of them, but I think I only need two because they're 1.34 pounds so two of them is close enough to two and a half pounds they are an organic ground beef um, raised without antibiotics no growth hormones and they really aren't very fatty when you cook them because we do want to get rid of any additional moisture or excess fat if that is the case so let me get these open Two of them in. In the meantime, we are going to get going on the one cup of celery as well as one cup of chopped onion and a whole bunch of garlic. So I'm going to chop it pretty small because once I get this in with the ground beef, what we don't want is we don't want to um, emerge, immersion blend the sauce any further. We'll just have a little bit of life to it. One cup celery. I grabbed my fresh onions out of the basement. Uh, I have so much dirt still on them. I haven't brushed them off yet for storage and so I just slice them up and then rinse them real quick so we're not getting a bunch of dirt in our meal here. Let's see. Like pepper. Fresh parsley. Okay. I'm doing things a little out of order, but because every, there's my head, everything is going to go into the tomato mix, I'm going to take the brown ground beef. It's going to go in here because we're going to saute the vegetables for about three minutes and then everything is just going to go in the tomato sauce together. Reheating the pan, just leaving whatever oil is in there we're going to add, I did add a couple jalapenos. We like everything a little bit spicy in our house. So we're going to add all of that in and saute this for just a couple of minutes. About five cloves of garlic into the sauce. To the tomato sauce, we're going to add our sauteed veg. Okay. One quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Two tablespoons of dried oregano.
four teaspoons of salt because this is just kosher salt with some uh, freeze dried onions. We're gonna use that. Just amp the flavor up a little bit. And then two teaspoons of black pepper. And because it's for my family, it doesn't call for it. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of crushed red pepper flakes. Seasonings and spices don't mess too terribly much with the canning re recipe. Be really careful, the tomatoes might, there you go, splatter a little. If they get on your hand, it will scald you. Okay, so give that a good stir. When it's, <laughs> I've done enough canning to know even though this, I would never make spaghetti sauce without red pepper flakes. And so if I want it to be something my family's gonna enjoy, it's a good idea to make it a way that you know they're used to. With that in mind, we have the fresh parsley that we got out of our garden this morning and some of the basil that we got at Costco with the tomatoes. I like the basil flavor in my tomato sauce, tomato sauce, but if these are seasonings and flavors you don't like, don't use them. Now we're gonna let this cook down until it is at a consistency that we want it at, but what I'm gonna do is cook it down for a few minutes let all of the flavors come together and I'm gonna taste test it before I continue rendering it down. I am gonna clean up the kitchen. I'm gonna get these tomatoes in the pan and start rendering them down as well. Okay, the second pot of tomatoes has come to the simmer. We've let it go for several minutes. We're going to turn it way down and immersion blend it a little further. I mostly crushed it by hand. Actually, I'm gonna turn off the flame so I don't burn my cord on accident. So this is gonna go for an hour with the seasonings and such in it. And so okay, to these tomatoes, you already saw me chop onions. We're gonna add a cup of onion. a bunch of basil and parsley and about eight crushed cloves of garlic. Start simmering this. I think it's gonna need a little salt, maybe a little pepper, but we're gonna let this go for at least 20 minutes before we try and doctor it up. We are ready to jar. So I'm gonna move this off the stove. We'll jar right here. And then on to the same burner, I put a couple of inches of water in the bottom of my pressure canner. And we're gonna start preheating that so that the temperature is the same in the canner as the jars. I also went ahead and pre-washed a bunch of jars. And what my goal is, is to put these in the bottom of the canner. By the time that I get this done, then what I'm gonna be able to do is actually put the other tomato sauce in the layer on top because my canner won't hold two layers of quarts, but it will hold quarts and pints. Something to keep in mind, is will the pints overcook a little? Yes, but they won't burn. So they're just gonna cook at a high temperature for a longer period of time, but I'm going to be able to use the canner once as opposed to having to wait for the pressure to come down to zero, take all the jars out and restart. So we have this stirred together. We taste tested it. It is just really, really good. It's got plenty of uh, substance to it. So let's start jarring up. The 
leaving one inch of head space. So that means at the bottom, so this whole thing has to be left as space. Next jar. Doesn't that look beautiful? And it's such a wonderful thickness too. Like it isn't soupy. I have a brand new clean rag. I didn't wipe anything with this. It came out of the wash and I haven't used it. I'm going to wipe off each of the jars. If you were to get anything on the jar, hot. the lid, it won't seal. And if it doesn't seal and it's siphoned in your pressure canner, this would be gross to clean up. I had a can of beans one time break in the pressure canner. Not a fun experience. Washed lids. Reuse rings. So finger tight means you just spin it on and then just give it a little bit of a twist. The water's starting to steam, so I'm gonna load these in. I'm literally running out of jars. That was the goal. <laughs> this month, however, I do like when I'm doing a candy project for all the jars to be the same and they're not going to be. Let's taste test this. I decided not to do the salt because I would figure we would do like some sort of salt for pizza sauce or whatever. So maybe you leave it a little plain. That's the wrong move. And we're gonna add about, add about a teaspoon of the garlic salt. I don't like my food to have no flavor, no salt. It's pretty mellow, but it's good. You get the onion, you get the garlic, and you get the basil for sure. Perfect. enough for another jar so I'm gonna make just some boil some pasta tonight and make this the combination will be just fine let's lid these and get that can of running To seal an all-American canner, I have just some like, oil in my hand. And we run it along. I do rinse everything before, so that's a little bit of water. And then, that should go on that. And then I pull them up opposite of each other. Oops. Right, and then turning them as best I can, as tight as I can get them because this is going to be building so much pressure. We do not want this lid blowing off. There we go. One more time around. All right. 
Let's get her going. We're gonna vent for 10 minutes. And then because there are quarts, not just pints in there, the quarts have to go for 70 minutes. Double check that. Quart size jars are 70 minutes. Pints are only 60. Pints are 60. So the pints that are in there, because we didn't add any acid, we do have to pressure can the tomatoes. You can water bath canned tomatoes if the acid is correct. However, at our elevation, we're gonna do 10 pounds of pressure. After this vent, solid steam for 10 minutes. I went ahead and rinsed, have everything ready. This is my carry. This is a countertop electric pressure canner. And we're going to use it. Sorry, let's see. While I preheated the water, I went ahead and did all the dishes. So, couple inches in there, lid on. I like to turn this sideways because I don't like it venting up. So we're gonna say hi. Let's see if I can show you. Say hi and then 70. Then start. What it's gonna do is we have it on exhaust. We didn't, we do now. We have it on exhaust. It's going to count down its own 10 minutes of exhaust. And then once that's up, I just flip it to airtight. And when I do that, it builds the pressure and it monitors where the pressure is at. And it will keep it at the right pressure for 70 minutes. It'll count down and it'll just shut itself off. I don't actually have to watch it or worry about anything. It's a wonderful little Thing because obviously for three jars to wait on a pressure canner like this for the 70 minutes then it has to come down for a certain till zero pressure then you take the thing off then you have to wait like it's a big ordeal and then the jars and whatever you're starting the pressure canner temperature wise would have to be at the same so having both of them is fantastic and I also think this is part of why I call myself a modern homestead. Hey, if you can use a modern convenience, the other fantastic part about this is if you're in a one and two person home and you're not stocking up food for the amount of people we are like, that's not even half a year's worth of spaghetti sauce. Um, you might really enjoy a canner like this that would just allow you to do some soups and stews and different things that you pressure can up really quick. But I think it's wonderful. It's working, it's heating, and that is it. I definitely wanted to do this at a different time. However, it is what it is. And I need to quickly package up this freeze dried stuff that I grabbed out before it starts getting a bunch of moisture in it and I let it come up to temperature. My friend here locally sent these to me. How cute are they? I know exactly what they were when I got them. She said, I hope you like them. Thank you. I actually met this friend. She came to the Homestead Conference. She watches the channel and then came to the Homestead Conference in order to meet myself and some other YouTube channels. But look, she's like, you can hold open bags. All right, this is the pumpkin. It turned out great, super duper dry. This was good organic pumpkin that I roasted and pureed myself. So good for pies, dog food, anything that you might want to add pumpkin to. Label it. 
So next up, we have the crinkle carrots. My friend Amy said she didn't care for them. They literally are like chips. I think they're actually pretty good. But I haven't tried rehydrating them. Same thing, oxygen absorber, and seal it. Next is the mixed veggies. I don't know why I grew up on these and they're not my favorite, but I think they'll work really good to throw like a soup or stew together, hunting, camping, you know, out there in the wilderness where you just use a can of broth and some meat, and some mixed veg. I think that'll be wonderful. These. The peas, do you know what they're like? They used to have this cereal. I don't know if they have it anymore. But was like a little popping ball like that. It's that same texture. It tastes really good. I think these and the carrots, the beets that we did, you could make like the coolest chip trail mix out of all of it. Ooh, I'm making a mess. I'm sweating really bad. That's all right. We're going to get through this. I needed to get this done out of my way. I kind of eased up on the freeze dry for a little bit. Just got distracted. I'm holding pressure right now so that's going good and then i started some water just for i'm gonna throw a box of pasta on for dinner uh aaron had to work this weekend and he doesn't normally work on the weekends and literally guys it's 7 30 at night i have not fed wyatt or i wyatt worked all morning just got home a couple hours ago so this has been an all day project. And then with the amount of planting I did yesterday, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little exhausted. So a simple dinner, but with not want not. You have to deal with that when it's in there. Seal that up. And I can clean this up. Have my pasta. I'll show you the jars when they're finished, but that might be tomorrow that I record it. Hold up. I'll be right back. Well, last night it got super late. Aaron got home super late. It always late. <laughs> I was tired. We got the cans. We've wiped off all of the jars. We didn't have any failures. We had no siphoning to speak of, but I do want to touch on, I wash the jars before I store them. Just a little soap and water, a little wipe down, because when you open a pressure canner, everything has a little bit of smell of whatever it is that you've canned. And I don't like those smells in my pantry. So if you just unscrew the rings, which the rings can cause a false seal, what that means is you put the ring on, you've sucked it down, maybe you've had a failure in the jar, and because that ring is on, it might pressure itself and seem to reseal. Um, this can really happen if your jars were to get heated up, say you were storing them in a garage in Arizona, something like that. So we always wanna remove the rings when storing our jars. The rings are reusable and then the lids are not. The other thing is it can store the smells right underneath that ring. So I just pop them off, give everything a good wash, and then it goes into the pantry. Then I have had 
some failures. I have gone in there, I like to dust and check on my jars periodically, and I have found some failures. We just toss the contents, it's not a big deal. However, it would be a big deal if you had a false seal and you made your family very, very sick. All right, the other thing I wanna talk about with pressure canning is I know that I was super nervous learning this skill, this technique, and I remember the first time I did it was actually right here on this homestead, and I had to keep calling my neighbor going, it's doing this, is it fine? It's doing this, is it fine? And I just was super nervous now that I've done a lot of it, it really isn't that difficult. So I do encourage you to give pressure canning a try. As far as dinner, we ate the leftover, the mixture with a box of pasta. And you know what? I had some of my earlier, we had made an onion and a garlic scape pesto. Well, I had used that for pizza this week and I had just like this much of the garlic scape pesto left in the fridge. When I opened the fridge to get the Parmesan out, I was like, oh, that'll work. Threw some of that in there to die for. It was actually very, very good. So super happy with how everything turned out. And I look forward to my family getting to eat this this winter. And I truly think this is something that I would like to invest more time and effort into preserving a whole lot more of it in the future. I think this is a winner. So I'm gonna label the jars before I store them in the pantry. We are getting pretty close this week. I think it's the last week of the challenge. Can you believe it? I honestly, I cannot believe it's flown by so fast and I have just truly enjoyed my time with you. If you've enjoyed your time with me and you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, I know over 40% of my views are on television and it doesn't often make you sign in or subscribe. So if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, would you do that please? Thank you very much. And with that, I hope that you are blessed this week. I hope that you find a reason to be grateful and I hope that I'll see you in the next video. With that, I'll talk to you soon.